Uh, my name is Brad Nelson. I'm going to talk to you about uh, bringing X11 to the web. So uh, the motivation, well, I'm going to show this picture just because I, I find it amusing. This is uh, a TI-99 4A, which is the first computer I ever owned. And um, I, mine obviously didn't look like this. This one's got a ton of stuff attached to it. But the thing I remember most about it was you turn on the power switch, and it's ready to go. And uh, somehow software hasn't felt that way in a long time. So that's, that's kind of the underlying thing in my head that's motivating me. But what I really hate is I, I hate configuring new computers. I get a new computer and it's like, okay, now where where all my my dot files, all my you know what packages do I want? And, and it's always the same thing over again. And I'm I'm a paranoid sort of fellow, and so I don't uh, I don't trust the programs that I run. And uh, I'm a programmer, so I want my computer to be able to to help me program. So um, what do I want to do? I want to be able to develop in the browser. And um, to make that possible, I, it needs to be secure, and it needs to be fast. And uh, so, but I'm going to need some stuff. And there's a lot of software that I depend on. And so, you know, I'm, I'm a Vim user. I'm going to want Vim, and uh, I need Git, and I need a bash prompt, uh, and I need some interpreters, Python, and I'm going to need some compilers. But I'm going to need X11 because um, there's there's just enough. X11 stuff that I'm going to care about it. And so, you know, it's going to be GIMP, for example. Um, so what I really need is native code. And when you're thinking of web browser, native code, that's maybe not such a good idea. I mean, you're thinking of, you know, things like this, where you get the, the scary warning and you can, yes and no is not a fun thing, because you say yes, and well, then you're, who knows what you're going to have, and no, and well, then you don't have anything. Um, so, um, Fortunately, at least in, uh, in Google Chrome, there's this uh, technology called Native Client. And uh, it, it lets you do something that's kind of neat. It lets you have native code that's as secure as JavaScript. And it's verifiably safe. And potentially, at least, it's portable. Um, and it's open source. It has a BSD license. So I'm going to use some terminology in this talk uh, just, just out of habit, if nothing else. So na Native Client is often referred to as NACL. Little you know sodium joke in there, and uh, portable native client is, is, is often called Pinnacle, uh, and there's this other API PP API, which is Pepper. It's got uh, another salt and pepper joke in there, uh, things of that nature. Uh, it's the I/O layer for it. So native client. Let me let me tell you. So from from the user's point of view, what's native client going to do for you? You've got some C code. You're going to compile it with native client's tool chain, and you get out a, a, a Nexi or a NACL executable. And uh, you pair that with some amount of JavaScript, some HTML, and you can hand that to, to a user, and, and they, can, they can run stuff. And, but remember, I said secure. So um, we've got not one, but two sandboxes. Right? So we've got uh, Chrome's outer process sandbox, which is the, the sort of sandbox that uh, is uh, protecting you in general when you've, you've got ordinary tabs. And we also have an inner static verification sandbox which you can use in the context of native client. Um, so the process sandbox uh, has Chrome sitting between you and the OS. And then if you've got a tab, there for ideally for each tab, uh, for each origin, there's a render of a process. And uh, the render of a process uh, you know, only talks to Chrome, and Chrome is the one that talks to the OS. Uh, and it's isolated, and it's restricted in what it can do. And you know, separate origins have separate ones. And if you've got a NACL module, um, it's even further isolated. It's off talking, you know, through the renderer process back to the browser. Um, and then within that, uh, we use some software fault isolation techniques. Uh, we do control flow integrity checks to restrict what code can execute, and we restrict the data that can be accessed uh, from data integrity checks. And uh, there's a very restricted I/O interface. So NACL has a has a particular kind of address layout. Uh, you've got 256 megabytes of, of potential space for code, and then uh, up to four gigabytes of, uh, of data region. And they're, they're segregated from each other. So things that are in the code region, it's read execute only. Things that are in the data region are, are uh, read write, and, and the two do not mix. Um, but you want to make sure that bad things don't happen ever. You want to be sure of that. And so uh, you want to be able to disassemble all the code, um, because if you're going to run native code, you need to know that it's not just any old native code. It needs to be safe code. Um, and the disassembly has to be unambiguous. 
Um, so you, you need to know where it's going to jump. You need to know where every direct jump goes, but more importantly, you need to know uh, where all the indirect jumps go. And that's a little harder uh, because that even includes, you know, if you call into a function and you return, if the stack is untrusted, then you've got issues. You need to know that they're at least safe. You may not need to know where they're going to go ahead of time. Um, so the, the key trick that makes this possible, um, if you imagine this just being one inspection, well, normally when you have code, um, particularly on architectures like x86, you don't know how big an instruction is going to be. You don't know where it's going to end. Um, so you, don't even, you could jump into the middle of an instruction uh, in a bad case. Um, but more importantly, if you're going to put some constraints on what the code can do, um, you, you really don't have uh, sort of any, any sensible place to put a boundary. So the, the key sort of thing that Native Client does to, to get security is uh, force bundle alignment. And so uh, we make sure that at every 32-byte uh, boundary, there's a, a safe point that you can uh, go into the, uh, uh, you can go into. And uh, so with an indirect jump, what happens is that you uh, mask off the bottom five bits, and you know that you're safe no matter where you land. Now, the drawback is that you have to pad out a lot of these bundles with knobs, so there's a little bit of waste there, and that's the, the, the where you get some performance overhead with native client. Um, so, and then beyond that, uh, depending on the architecture, there's some uh, uh, techniques that are used to restrict uh, uh, what I said before, where you want to make sure that you, know, you can only execute the executable region and only read-write in the read-write region. And on some, on x86-32, I have a question. What's your question, sir? Oh, oh sorry. Um, on x86-32, on x uh, we're, we're able to pull out a, a, a goodie, but an oldie. A segment registers are used to restrict uh, some of the access. But on the other architectures, uh, we end up doing a little bit of masking uh, of jumps and memory accesses. And you see there's a little more overhead there. But on, on total, uh, the, the performance is actually uh, typically in the order of like 20% on, on x64. It can get as bad as 30%. depends a little bit on the mix of instructions in the application. Um, and then syscalls, well, you obviously, you know, you're not going to just do regular syscalls. That's going to be dangerous and scary. Um, so you're going to do syscalls through these uh, trampolines that get you out of the sandbox. And so for a small region of the, the sandbox, you um, loosen the restrictions around the bundles for some pre-prescribed uh, escape hatches. Um, and that lets you uh, provide a, uh, uh, an API for, for doing I.O. Um, the one that pro that's provided in Chrome is uh, uh, PP API. It's a sort of web-centric API. It's very asynchronous. Uh, everything is asynchronous in it, which is very webby. Uh, it gives you access to graphics, including OpenGL ES2. Uh, there's some APIs for sound. Uh, if the, in certain contexts, you have network access, not every context. Uh, clipboard access in some contexts, and you can also have some local storage associated with the origin. It gives you a place to put stuff. Um, so if you've got um, if you've got your, your MACL module, you're, you're doing sort of asynchronous messaging back and forth uh, with with Pepper. So um, for for vanilla native client applications, native client as I've described it here, uh, the only place you can actually put them is in your Chrome Web Store. Um, and that's mainly not because it's, uh, of concerns around security, but because of concerns around uh, portability. And the issue is that uh, when somebody is distributing code, we don't want them to say, okay, here's x86, and that's it. We don't want to uh, have just one architecture. Uh, but in the web store, we're able to say, okay, well, this, you know, here's a limitation. And uh, if, if we come back later and say we need to support more architectures, we can do that. Um, but, and I'll talk about portability more in a second, but... Um, if you're porting something uh, like all those applications I listed before, Vim and, 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 uh, and X, uh, you're going to care about uh, POSIX compatibility. And that's something that, that Pepper, ooh, that's not happening. And yay, OK. Can I reconnect? That's an issue. And I'm going to get to the internet has failed me. I recommend to you large events, lots of folks on Wi-Fi. Don't put your slides online. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I'll just talk on to well, we got the one slide, and hopefully it will reconnect here in a moment. Um, so uh, in order to uh, to have POSIX compatibility, we had to do a little work to put this to build this back up on top of Pepper. Um, and so we uh, we went ahead and, and uh, in a kind of a Plan Nine like way, implemented a bunch of virtual file systems that 
uh, sit on top of uh, Pepper. And uh, we have some very basic ones like a memory file system, but then we also do some that store it at DOM storage and uh, HTTP. There's a fuse mount. Um, and then we emulate some other things like sockets that you're going to want. And very soon we're going to have uh, some links. And if this doesn't reload, I'll fall back on the fun offline version that I wisely. Oh, wow, that's a long time. Okay. Got to do the one try here to get that back. Somebody turned on their phone, and that was just too much for the Wi Fi here. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to do the backup slides. Okay. Mm. Okay. All right. So, um, so in addition to, to emulating all the sort of like single process, um, process stuff. Um, the other big thing, particularly as you get higher and higher up the stack, um, you, you end up having uh, things like processes that you want to emulate. And Mac will usually get one process. You get thre multiple threads within it, um, but we've ended up needing to emulate uh, uh, PIDs and uh, things like uh, Spawn. We're not able to do fork, but we can do vfork uh, and wait PID and things like that. And pipes will get another one coming soon. And I assume we'll for some reason this today again. Um, and uh, so what we end up with is a, a JavaScript microkernel of a sort where you've got uh, processes that are actually DOM nodes that are managed by JavaScript. And you, uh, they have PIDs, and they can wait on each other, and they pass lovely asynchronous messages. And uh, one other fun piece of the puzzle that uh, we, we got from, uh, uh <coughs> from uh, one of our contributors is a, uh, a VPP20, actually it's a, more like an XPIN color, implemented uh, totally in JavaScript uh, called HPIN. And so it uh, gives us a terminal. And, uh, and I'll, then there's one, I'm going to make a little segue into portability here, which I reordered in the other version of the slides. But anyways, um, so I mentioned all this stuff talking about native code, but really most of the code that uh, the folks care about is, uh, is C code. And uh, so a, uh, a potential trade-off you could make in terms of portability is uh, you could say, well, let me do all the high-level optimizations ahead of time, and then on a, uh, in the browser do, uh, do the last little bit of the compile. And that gives you something we call portable native client, uh, where we transmit uh, a uh, flattened version of the LLVM uh, intermediate representation, uh, and that gives us portability. And we do some lovely caching that I'm not going to talk about much detail here, but basically the idea is that if you've seen a particular portable executable before, you only need to the, do the translation once. And it, as a neat aside, the, um, the translation from portable to uh, architecture specific is actually done by a translator that itself uh, runs inside of native client uh, uh, sandbox as well. So you, you don't have to trust the compiler on the target. So finally here, back to, back to uh, all the, all the, uh, the fun ports. So um, on this foundation, we've been able to actually uh, start uh, porting a, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and uh, we've, we've done this trying to keep as, you know, as little diff as possible because when you're making porting something, you, you don't want to introduce a whole ton of diff. And uh, so we've, we've accumulated a whole bunch of packages that we've been able to port to native client. And um, we've been uh, you know, uh, keeping, uh, we've been mirroring up the upstream and we have a continuous uh, build and test farm for it. And we have like 200 packages ported. And um, we keep a continuous build of this. Let me turn this TV real quick if this came back. But Backpackers won't come back. No, of course not. Um, and so I, we reached the point where we could put this together into little mini units that, that gets me closer to that, that goal I mentioned originally that I, that I want to be able to do you know, all my things in the browser. Um, and so we have Bash. We've got a bunch of editors. We've got Vim, Nano. We've recently got Emacs. Um, we've got a bunch of interpreters, uh, GCC, and we've just recently got LLVM uh, working in the browser as well. And so you end up with a, an environment that I'll, I'll show a little demo of in a moment. But uh, you can, you've got a bash prompt, and we can pop up things. But, uh, and that one's just doing direct uh, pepper. But what about X, right? Uh, there's a bunch of cool things that you, that you really need X for. Um, and it turns out that X uh, was not that hard to port. Um, it's broken down into a bunch of uh, very nicely factored packages. 
many of the packages uh, are able to build with our tool chain without modification. There's a very nice separation between uh, sort of transport layers and, um, and the different pieces, and it's very portable code. Um, for the moment, we're using sockets uh, for transport. This has one key drawback, which is that, um, so on, uh, in a Chrome app, which we install through the Chrome Web Store, even though it's you know, done with the, the web stack, um, you're allowed to do some extra things if you ask, ask permissions. And one of those things is uh, uh, sockets. Um, with, uh, if you're on the open web, like on an actual web page, uh, then you're not allowed to do sockets. So at some point, uh, particularly for X, it'll be interesting to swap out transport, but I, I actually kind of look forward to that because the, the, uh, the layer to do that is very small and very uh, easy to add another form of transport. So uh, we were able to bring up an X server uh, using this. There's um, a lovely port of uh, X, an X server that runs on top of SDL, and we already had an SDL port uh, done by, by this, uh, this uh, fellow here. Um, it's a K-drive drive uh, X server, so it's uh, obviously got, uh, it's kind of old school and it's got various limitations. Long term, it might be nice to, to, to get access to GL, but, uh, and we did some fussing around of originally, well, the port was on SDL, and we ported it back to SDL2, and then went back to SDL1 uh, because of compatibility and uh, not needing a graphics, uh, graphics chip all the time. Um, and I, have, you know, there's a bunch of dependencies between these packages, but uh, despite how many of them are, are this, is, this is the dependencies for X eyes, uh, and here's, you know, gives you some idea, all the, the sundry packages in the X server, um, but they're all very small packages, and there's only in all of this something on the order of 1,200 lines of diff, and a lot of that diff is uh, stuff that really shouldn't be there. It's things where, um, for example, right now, uh, dumb little things like a native client requires an entry point that's not called main, so every place where there's a main, you need to do a little bit of work to patch that, and that will hopefully go away in the near future. But the net result is we're able to, uh, we were able to bring up uh, some X apps. In fact, uh, by some uh, twist of uh, chance, it, it turned out that uh, we actually got the X version of, of Emacs up before the console version. It was uh, tricky enough to, <laughs> to get all of the console plumbing in, uh, in, in Emacs working. Um, we've got some window managers uh, like PWM, XEyes, and I'm going to slide through this because I'm going to go to demo here in a minute. Um, but uh, as I mentioned before, uh, one of the things we might want to do is, is uh, move our, uh, our, uh, our transport off of sockets so that we can do this on, a, on an actual web page. Um, and then the big thing is port all the things. And uh, one, one thing in, in my sort of long list of stuff is I would very much like to see GIMP. Uh, we're not, not there today. The X server, you can, you can point GIMP at it, but not, uh, GIMP itself doesn't run. And there are a bunch of uh, really uh, awesome folks that contributed to this. Now I'm gonna, uh, if, the, if there aren't any questions now, I'm gonna go to a demo. Oh, question. Could you use the transport to create a web page? Yes, you could. Um, and so Okay, so um, the performance uh, it's, uh, performance is obviously you know uh, a complicated thing. Um, I would say that the X server's performance is is not all that I would hope for, um, partially because of uh, the uh, the interaction with SDL, and so there's the assumption that oh I'm going to redraw the whole screen, and so there's there's some waste there. Um, in general, though, uh, the most of the performance bottlenecks are around I/O, and so. Um, in, in this environment in general, one of the big uh, issues we've run into is that uh, this uh, PPAPI interface that I mentioned before has a lot of round trip time uh, for file I.O. And so there are a bunch of contexts, like particularly with the compilers, uh, where, where we're currently very unhappy with the sort of round trip time. If you've got a thousand header files and you're touching all of them, uh, that doesn't do pretty things. But the actual core uh, uh, execution, the, the overhead is very small. It, it, it is really quite close to native code. Um, so the, uh, the, the big, uh, so as in jest, uh, just to give everyone context, and I, sorry, the question, the first question was uh, what, what's the performance like? The second question was uh, uh, can, can you contrast it with as in jest? So uh, as in jest for context for everyone is, uh, it, so in uh, Firefox there's a uh, technology that uh, expresses uh, a similar kind of a portable representation. There's, there's some similarities with portable native client. Um, where uh, it's, it's expressed as uh, JavaScript code that uh, has a set of constraints that, uh, that lets you uh, do a similar kind of a compile uh, on the client side 
uh, and, and be able to do this in a, f a fast pass where, uh, where, you, where you get uh, uh, also performance that's similar to native. Um, the, uh, the main differences are that uh, because we have threads, um, there's a lot of issues with reentrancy that uh, particularly, you know, so it's um, one, one, of the, one of the weird things is that you've, uh, Asm has been very effective for porting some, some neat stuff. You've got like, you know, um, uh, the Unreal Engine ported on one extreme, but then something, you know, silly like the say NetHack uh, is, is miserable to port because you've got, uh, you've got to uh, block somewhere down in the bowels of it. And because uh, you're running on the, on the uh, main JavaScript thread, there's uh, some issues with reentrancy. That said, um, Asm has some very good performance and they're fellow travelers and we definitely are excited about uh, uh, you know, folks doing, uh, doing native code in the browser and um, I'm, I'm uh, optimistic that they'll uh, you know, figure out a, a good way to introduce threads and uh, that, uh, th that we can uh, po possibly actually bring a lot of these ports uh, uh, to, the, to Asm as well. Um, and in fact, they actually our, our uh, NACL ports repository that I mentioned, we do, um, it's not on our continuous build, but we do have a switch to try to turn on some of the inscription uh, ports of them as well. Um, and it's, it's a sort of a mixed bag, you know, for any given port, if it's a pure library and you can kind of, kind of cleanly go in and out of it, you can, uh, you can share a lot of the same plumbing. And in fact, our, uh, uh, our uh, Pinnacle tool chain, uh, we actually share a lot of the same uh, plumbing uh, uh, in LLVM. There's some passes that are shared by both inscription and uh, Pinnacle. To demo. All right, so um, in it, so th these look shockingly like apps, and so f to the uninitiated, you're thinking, "Hey, he's running like Torrent here." But these are uh, are all built in the web stack. They're you know glued together with uh, with JavaScript. They're things that um, you could certainly run them on a web page by cheating, and uh, there's a setting in Chrome that just let lets you turn on NACL everywhere. The primary issue is that uh, that's not a that's not a sort of a, por a portable stack moving forward. But the other good thing that you get is uh, stuff that can run uh, without, oh, and in fact here I've got the JavaScript console open on this one for some reason. Um, so this is the barex server running. And then the dev environment is uh, shockingly a uh, bash prompt. And um, so what I'm gonna do here is, uh, so the, the X server is just running on, uh, on the display 42. And I've, there's a default uh, in the environment here and I'm gonna run CWM, and well that doesn't do anything because it's just a window manager sitting there waiting to run. And I'm gonna fire up another one. Um, one, one issue, as I mentioned before, we're just a little shy of pipes and uh, we're, also, uh, we're also short uh, asynchronous signals to, to do something like control Z. So right now I'm uh, firing up two of these in order to get something running. And uh, one of the things that we ported that uses X is uh, uh, Tickle 2K. Uh, a while back, actually, the Tickle folks did a port, and uh, I was able to bring up 2K without a lot of trouble. And so I can run the Wish interpreter here, and run this postcard, and oh, okay. Um, now, uh, as we suggested, you know, you can uh, you could point your uh, you could be forwarding from another location, and you could. Uh, this is obviously local, but you could, uh, you know, run something, something like GIMP, and then have it come up and, and do its usual thing and whatnot. So, um, the long-term hope, of course, is to have uh, have GIMP be uh, something running also in the NACL module. You can uh, let's start with another one here, um, and uh, so you can, for example, fire up Emacs, and of course, I, you know, I'm not a and Emacs is, so Emacs is a fun whole story. And there's another talk actually on Emacs that my colleague is, uh, that, did, that uh, did the port is gonna uh, do it a little bit here. The, the startup is not all we would hope for. Uh, and there's a number of reasons for that that he'll go into in ex excruciating detail, but uh, we get Emacs. Um, and so uh, what we're, uh, you know, uh, hoping to move towards is uh, to, to bring more and more stuff up. We're hoping uh, that uh, it'll get easier and easier to do these ports. A lot of the uh, a lot of the ports have almost zero diff, and it, in particular, if we can get that uh, that entry point changed from uh, NACL main to main, we'd be uh, in good shape to have uh, a whole lot more zero diff ports. And for some of the ports, um, a lot of the diffs are, are just things that we could we could upstream and actually should upstream uh, that are just you know sort of general portability things. Um, and so I'm I'm excited to that uh, we're going to hopefully be able to bring uh, a lot of uh, desktop apps to the browser in the near future. Any questions? Way too fast. Oops. Oops. Sorry. Oops. Oh, 
Go ahead. Um, so I mean, this is running as 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 a as a user. So you're you know there's no there's no special credentials required here. Yeah, but it's not really a ah, oh, uh, on demand running is uh, it's certainly a possibility. Um, yeah, we haven't you know, we've just sort of got the core functionality at the moment. But yeah, there's a lot of lot of possibilities to make it more seamless. Because yeah, ideally you don't want just a big flat desktop. You want to uh, you want to have uh, yeah each each thing on its own, and for some of the apps like um, we we've actually uh, in the short term we played around with packaging the X server with them, which is kind of you know has pros and cons. There's a one of the versions of, of Emacs that we've we've got it all sort of you know Emacs spins up, um, and uh, uh, but but yeah there's there's definitely some possibilities. Oh I should mention one one other interesting wrinkle um, with bringing up the X server, um, it's it's largely one process, but there's uh, one one uh, one thing that was surprisingly hard to make go away, and so we finally just brought up the, com the keyboard compiler. Really, really wants to be its own thing. Shall out and run, compile the keyboard on the keyboard uh, map on demand. And so it's all a single process, with the exception of, of it's shelling out the bash, shelling out to the keyboard compiler, and then starting up. So, all right, last question. Um, we do not have a browser running. Um, there's <laughs> well, actually, that's not completely true. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, you, you, you all may have heard of there's a project called Arc uh, that uh, has a portion of uh, Android uh, uh, running in, in, in a native client as well. And uh, they actually have a, a good chunk of WebKit up. And so there's a, the, the, the portion of WebKit uh, needed for a web view, uh, basically on Android, is able to come up uh, in the actual and, and run with Linux. So <laughs> in that, in, and you can actually hit the fallback uh, for some of the apps there where you end up in, a, in what is basically the, the, uh, the Android browser. So <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> not not in this not in, in this exact environment, but in native client. All right. I apologize. I blazed through that way fast. Any more questions? Yeah, yeah. Um, so in terms of, um, yeah, so w way back then, Native Client actually, so then Native Client actually, uh, its first release started out as a, uh, a Firefox plugin. And at that time, we, uh, we didn't have any, any IO um, layers to it, so it was really just you could uh, offload compute. Uh, and certainly integrating that portion of Native Client would be relatively straightforward. Um, the the big uh, the big issue uh, with uh, sort of the whole stack would be supporting Pepper um, and, and that I/O layer, which is a little bit more uh, sort of pe Pepper has Chrome's properties sort of laced throughout it, so there might be a little more effort involved in that. Um, certainly, it would be something that would be uh, be useful in terms of portability. We do have a layer. Um, we have this project called uh, uh, Pepper JS that is. A an attempt to provide a, a Pepper compatibility layer done in JavaScript that works with Asm.js. Um, and so um, one issue there is because of that reentrancy issue I mentioned before, um, there's a, if you have a very single threaded, very carefully structured app you can, you can, that's done with Pepper, you can compile it for Asm and you can compile it for, uh, for Natural and have them work the same. But it has to be very, ca it has to be, uh, very careful about how it, uh, how it blocks. 